Hello everybody, Sanyo, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to make a video on this latest blog article on ARK Invest website, Genome Editing Outcomes Vary by Technology, of course, written by none and the other than Ali Yurman, Analyst at ARK Invest about genomics and so on, specifically CRISPR. And uh, this article was really an interesting article from uh, Ali Yurman here because because of several reasons. First of all, I think this is actually the first CRISPR article that they've posted in a while. Um, I think ARK Invest has posted several articles in the past months, and I don't think any of those had to do anything with specifically genome editing and more specifically CRISPR. And I found that really interesting that, you know, yesterday they decided to publish their first article in a while. So that's one thing. Second thing, I think uh, they do a good job, ARK Invest, is I think what they do and I've always respected the art of investing in this, is that they've always done a great job sort of, you know, making it simple for the average person, right? And the average person is not the person looking at our YouTube videos or, you know, going on Twitter and talking about CRISPR, or reading the CRISPR book from, uh, um, from Walter Isaacson there. That's not the average person. The average person actually has no clue about CRISPR. They don't even know about genome editing. I mean, if they think about genome editing, they're thinking like in 100 years. So clearly here, the average person here needs to be educated. And I think CRISPR, um, I mean, ARK Invest, they do a great job educating individuals on CRISPR, right? For example, this article, you know, obviously we won't go over this article in today's video um, fully, but I do want to talk about some, several key points, like for example, CRISPR and Talon's papers from 2005 and 2020. And again, for the average person looking at that, you know, they'll look at that. And of course, once they go through the article, they'll know that CRISPR is one form of genome editing and Talon is another form of editing. And clearly here you can see the exponential growth for CRISPR and Talon's being quite deceiving in terms of number of papers published between 2005 and 2020. And obviously this matters because the number of papers that you publish that means more universities are working on it. That means they're getting more grants on it. That means there's more interest from businesses on them and the cycle continues, right? So CRISPR obviously has a huge, huge presence in the universities, specifically in the US and China. We've seen that, we've actually talked about that in this video uh, with US leading it, but China being very close number two there with number of papers published by a university on CRISPR. And of course here again, this is what I love about ARK Invest and uh, Ali Yurman. They're, they're always, you know, going simple all and then drilling down into the specifics, right? And these are things that I think, you know, again, for the average person, you're reading this and you're like, why do I need to know this? Well, you know, if you don't understand this, then you'll probably never understand the reason why base editing is present and important or even better prime editors, right? And this is why I, I, I love this type of article. And you know, guys, I'm, I'm all about this type of, of education, free education. I mean, this is a free article, you know, it's on the website, it's emailed, it's published on Twitter. You guys can just click on it and read it. Um, and that's what I love about ARK Invest sometimes. They do a great job here. Like, just look at this, you know, CRISPR functionality is increasing, comparing each column in CRISPR nuclease, base editing, pre, prime editing, and you see size, PAM, breaks, uh, clinical, and you see here, uh, clearly here, you see the breaks being double-stranded for uh, CRISPR-Cas9, for example, and not not double-stranded, single-stranded NIC for base editors or prime editors. Uh, you can also see the size being smaller for nuclease, right, for CRISPR nuclease. Very important, right? Some application needs maybe a smaller size and maybe why you would want to have a smaller size. And I think that refers whatever analogy I just made it's a great reference. If you guys haven't watched it, the podcast episode between, between Dr. Liu and ARK Invest, uh, Ali Yurman, and it was ARK Invest, uh, Brett, uh, of course, the director there at ARK Invest. And they had like this trio part, part, uh, podcast. And one of the questions was, well, do you think base editors and prime editors will just wipe out CRISPR Cas9, for example? And the answer Liu gave, and it's an amazing answer, is that well, there's different applications for different things, right? You don't, you know, for example, you know, you're looking at ships, you're looking at cars, trucks, airplanes. You can't just say, oh, okay, airplanes is the faster, fastest way to get to somewhere. So I will always use an airplane. That's not, you know, that's just not the way the world works, right? You know, fuel is going to cost more. I mean, the, you know, it's time of waiting and just 
you know, what's the practicality there? And the plus the supply and demand just doesn't make sense. That's why you have boats. That's why you have cars. That's why you have trucks, SUVs, and so on, right? Bicycles, right? You have bicycles, right? Just because you have cars doesn't mean bicycles went away, right? So keep that in mind, guys. It's really important, these types of uh, analogies, because then you can sort of segment uh, the, the ambiguity that comes with, well, you know, base editors are just going to wipe out CRISPR-Cas9. Well, that's not how it is, right? Different applications require different things. Now, of course, if base editors are much better in a specific application, then it's likely that a company will adopt base editors. I mean, this is just a simple, you know, basic common sense. But the only thing I have to say about that is, again, there is no CRISPR-Cas9 or base editors or prime editors FDA-approved drug. So that means that really we're still in the free-for-all, right? When you think about it, it's still the Wild West, right? There's no FDA-approved drug. And until then, I mean, if you're using best editors, that doesn't mean you'll get to FDA approval faster. If anything, CRISPR-Cas9 is going to get you there due to hexacellular CTX001's progress, right? Which we expect to be FDA approved by this time of next year for sure, right? So again, this article goes over CRISPR. Well, it goes over CRISPR and the previous generations of editing like Talon. They go over CRISPR-Cas9 and, of course, then moving on to, um, of course, CRISPR nuclease, but moving on to base editors and, of course, now to prime editors. And I think the future is really the way we construct it. I think number of published papers on base editors and prime editors are increasing, but I think it will play out in a very long run. And again, if it does play out the way we're thinking, I strongly believe there will be different application for different uses right so i want to end this video like this hopefully you guys appreciate this video um it is a sunday hopefully you guys are having a beautiful sunday with your family your friends wherever you are uh whether that's in us canada europe i mean i'm spending time here in montreal back from family here um i am here for a business trip here with, for work during the work week but i decided to come over the weekend here with the family i mean it's always me to spend some time with family uh, I know I'm going off topic here, but I think it's really important sometimes just to spend a couple of hours or even days if you can, if you can afford it, uh, spend your family. I think, um, I mean, I, I've learned over the years that, you know, family is definitely something really important um, and you don't want to take it for granted. And, you know, if bonus points, if you have nieces, right, nieces or nephews uh, or even kids, obviously, but I'm talking about like family members that you're probably not daily with uh, your brothers, sisters, cousins and so on. So. Always a great idea, guys, to spend time with your family. Uh, I try to use, you know, whenever I'm in Montreal, I try to spend as much of this time I can with the family there. Um, so hopefully you guys are doing the same thing. So I'll end this video like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It's an honor to make these videos for you guys. I'm going to have some good videos this week. It's going to be all over the place. But do subscribe if you like this video. Of course, like this video if you like this video. And I'll see you guys during the week on Monday. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.